and then I'm going to turn it off. Because I'm back. So, this is the first time I've been able to stream or anything in the past few weeks. It has been such a crazy few weeks for me because I've been so busy doing all these different things. Um, like, uh, my parents got COVID and I had to uh, uh, babysit my brother for the two weeks that they were in quarantine. Um, and this is one of the many things that we had, that I had to deal with over the past couple of weeks. And that's why I've been streaming or recording because I've been so busy. However, videos have been starting to go back up on my YouTube channel and, uh, the, all, of course, all the more older videos that people on my Twitch have already seen. However, um, they can still be fun to go back and watch. Um, now, we're uh, we're playing Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. Um, I saw this on the Steam store a while back, and I was like, they will never forgive me if I don't play it. So once again, I'm going to subject myself to the horror what of what is and was Doki Doki Literature Club. Um, now, from what I understand, there's, there's hours of new content, new collectibles, but staying as close to the original game as possible. So, I'm just going to play through all over. Um, and with that being said, I'm going to turn the music up a little bit, because... Oof, that music is grating on my brain. Da -da 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 -da. Anyway, so as you see, I've got <coughs> no games up. Um, they're all still here. Please enter my name. Berkify Gaming. No, just Berkify. <laughs> Berkify it is. Alright, I don't remember everything about this game. Hey! I see a annoying girl running toward me from a distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you know each other for so long. We used to watch school together on days like this, but starting about high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. I gotta open my drink. I don't have fingernails, so I can't actually get under the tab right now. <coughs> Dying. There we go. But she's gonna chase after me like this. I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let they already catch up to me. Ha <laughs> ha! I overslept again! But I caught you this time! <clears throat> Maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. Uh, you said you like you were thinking about ignoring me. That's mean, Burkify. <laughs> well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Fine, fine. But you did wait for me after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean, even if you want to. Whatever you say, Sayori. <laughs> we cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the street becomes increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Berkify, have you decided on a club to join yet? My club? I told you already, I'm not really interested in joining any clubs. I haven't been looking either. Uh, that's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. She always likes to worry a little too much about me when I'm perfectly content just getting on, getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Uh-huh. I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Your happiness is really important to me, you know. And I know you're happy now, but I died the thought of seeing of, of you becoming a meat in a few years because you're not used to the real world. You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. Alright, alright. I'll look in, at a few clubs if it makes you happy. No promises, though. You at least promise you you'll try a little. Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. Yay! Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? 
more than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to e put her mind at ease. A little bit. Even if it does exaggerate everything hidden inside of her head. Now we know. Or I, I know what's inside her head and I'm already not going to enjoy it. Uh, school day is as ordinary as ever and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I start blankly at the wall looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. You know, big wooden sticks you used to beat people over the head that make you angry. Like this game. Alright, gamer. Oh. Tori wants me to check out some clubs. Guess I'm the choice, but start with the anime club, obviously. Hello? Sayori? Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was facing out. I look around and realize that I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I just saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late for your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know... Know what? Well, that you could come from my club. Sayori. Yeah? There is... No way I'm going to your club. Eh, uh, meanie? Sayori is vice president of the literature club. Not that I was ever aware she held any interest in literature. In fact, I'm not 100% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title of Vice President. And she got the Vice President by default. <laughs> that said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Come on, please! Why do you care so much anyway? Well, I kinda told the club yesterday that I would bring in a new member. And Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. I can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead, or if she's so cunning as to have planned all of this out. I let out a long sigh. Fine, I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Yes, let's go! Off to the literature club! And thus today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. No, that happened a few years ago. I've already done this once. <laughs> I'm here for the extra content. <laughs> for the... For the extra. So what this uh, as apparently added was it gave a more in-depth look at the various characters, how they became new friends, and you can watch them uh, grow together as a group um, along with some other stuff. Um, so that's what I'm here for. <laughs> uh, I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here! I told you, don't call me a new member. Eh? I glance around the room. Welcome to the Literature Club. It's a pleasure meeting you. That is... Yuri. Yuri always says nice things about you. Natsuki. Seriously? You brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. And... Monica. Ah, Bergfy, what a nice surprise. I'm still... <laughs> I'm still following her Twitter. <laughs> Because remember, if remember the end of the last one, or no, that never showed up. Did it? I think the last episode of this got taken down, or something happened to it doesn't exist. And she claimed to have a Twitter, and I was completely thrown off the shadow of Twitter, and I went to check, and she actually does. Ah, Berkfire, what a nice surprise. Welcome to the club. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. What are you looking at? Oh, say something, say it. S sorry. Natsuki. <laughs> the girl with a sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes her look like a first-year student. She's also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. You can ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori st says quietly into my ear. Then she turns back toward the other girls. Anyways, this... This is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yori, the smartest in the club. Don't say things like that. 
Yuri, who appears to be comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Asuki. Ah, well, it's nice to be spoke nice to meet both of you. And it sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? That's right. It's great to see you again, Burgify. Monica I hate that fucking pose. <laughs> Monica smiles sweetly. I I know your bullshit. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talked about talked, but we're in the same class last year. Monica was possibly the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically completely out of my league. So having her smile at me so it genuinely feels a little you do, Monica. Now, for people who are watching this and haven't seen the first one or the original one in any capacity, either through my own gameplay or somebody else's, um, I'm going to try not to spoil anything. But I can't always help it. <laughs> Come sit on Burger Five. I made room for you at the table so you can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Sorry, I got a little excited. Then how about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. As already mentioned, it's been widened so that there's one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner room where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Whoa! <laughs> Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. Whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolate were used to make the ears. So cute! I had no idea you were good at baking, Natsuki. <laughs> well, you know. Let's hurry and take one. Sayori grabs one first, then Monica. I follow. It's delicious! Sayori talks with her mouth full and Thorne managed to get icing on her face. <sighs> no, sorry, I just woke up like 20 minutes ago. I turned the cup and get around on my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaky glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of fla flavor. wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Why are you thinking me? It's not like I... Haven't I heard this somewhere before? I have, yes! I'm not happy about it! Made them for you or anything. Eh, I thought you technically did. Sayori said, well, maybe! But not for, you, you know, you! Dummy. Alright, alright. I give up on Azuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. He carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. Do you keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teacher gives us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? I don't usually drink hot tea, I drink cold tea. Ah, I, I guess. <laughs> don't, let your, don't let yourself get intimidated. You're just trying to impress you. That's not... Insulted, Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know... I believe you. Well, tea and Rudy might not be a pastime for me, but uh, I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow, then she smiles at me. So I bet you consider this literature club. Um... I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica I was practically dragged here by Sayori. And cupcakes. Let's not forget about the cupcakes. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet. Sayori really seemed happy here, so... That's okay. Don't be embarrassed. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How can you decide to start your own club? You could probably be a board member for any of the major clubs. Weren't you a leader of the debate club last year? <laughs> well, you know, to be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. It's like nothing but arguing about the budget, publicity, and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. If it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Monica really is a great leader. Yuri also nods in agreement. 
I feel like I'm reading it a little fast. I will try to slow down a little bit. Then I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah! We'll do our best. You know it. It seems like, initially, this seems like a, like a great group. Like, all, all highly motivated, ready to get things done and make the best out of this club. Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these three. Maybe that's why they're also delighted by the idea of a new member joining. Though, I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So, Birkenby, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh, considering how little I've read the past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga. I do! I actually, since I, since I last played this game, I actually did start reading manga. Um, I've actually got one of my boxes over here. Ugh. I got the first box set for, uh, One Piece here, that I'm still working on. Along with, like, uh, some Naruto books, um... Demon Slayer, Attack on Titan, Pokemon, I don't know if this technically counts, but I think it does, and Dragon Ball Z, which I never watched, so I have started reading manga recently, but I also still read other books, I still have the Kindle app on my phone, which is where I read most of my uh, electronic books. That is... Oh, yeah, I had to drop my phone. I wondered myself quietly, half-joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. Looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. N not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri changes the room for a teacup with her finger. My parents are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind, the, um, behind them is amazing to me. Telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you through the loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror stuff lately. Ah, I read a horror book once. Desperately grasp something I can relate to at the minimal level. Yeah, so when I read, uh, I I tend to read a variety of things, but I also get along with like the the fantasy books. So the game, uh, uh, like the Ranger's Princess series, when I was younger, I was really into. Um, the Tribulation Four series, I haven't finished yet because I because I'm not religious, so I'm trying to all the religious talk is boring after a while. So I haven't finished it yet, but. I need to. Um, I think my next book I was going to read was... I can't remember the name of it. It was a Dean Koontz book, though. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Really, I would have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you, I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is very is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror. Oh, why is that? Well, I just... Atsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. Atsuki seems to be... It seems to be trying to, like... Maybe it looks like she's trying to impress me, but like, saying she doesn't like horror and then realizing like I'm still there, she's like, never mind, you know? I, her reason is going to make me judge her or something like that. That's right, you're, you just like to write things, write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? 
You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. Look, like you'll work on a poem called Don't Say It Out Loud and Give That Back. Fine, fine. <laughs> your cupcakes, your poems, everything you do is just as cute as you are. Sora slides up behind Atsuki and puts her hands on her shoulders. I'm not cute! Don't worry, Natsuki, you're fucking adorable. <laughs> Uh, Natsuki, you write your own poems? Eh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? N no! Natsuki averts her eyes. You sh you wouldn't like them. Ah, not very confident writer yet? I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Masuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. I guess the same for you, Yuri. Uh, I want to read everyone's poems. We all said silence for a moment. Okay, I have an idea, everyone. Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. The next time we meet, we'll, sh we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Uh, um... Yeah, let's do it! Plus, now we have a new member, I think it will help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and try to the bottom of the club. Isn't that right, Berkify? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, there's still one problem. Eh? What's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I've only come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Tori may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. Oh, shit. I still have other clubs to look at, and, um... That was my train of thought. God, that's terrifying. <laughs> All four girls start back at me with dejected eyes. Because when I'm reading it, I'm not usually paying attention to what's going on up here. So I just glanced up and see all the rises. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, but. I'm sorry. I thought. Hmm. Burkify. We're all so sad. Y you all. I I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear head decision when it's like this? That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girl's eyes light up, and you just sold your soul. Yes, I'm so happy! Story wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Ugh, I can imagine the friend that put on my back. But, hey! You really did scare you for a moment. I really just came for the cupcakes, I'd be super pissed. Now they said official, welcome to the literature club. Ah, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. <sighs> everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Berkfi, I look forward to, see how, to seeing how you express yourself. <laughs> Yeah. Can I really impress star, the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside of me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. Hey, Berkafi, since you're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right. Sorry, and I never walk home together anymore because she always stayed after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. Yay! With that, the two of us depart the club room and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll, I'll, I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright, I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances, and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. It's time to write a poem. Pick words you think that your favorite club member will like. Something good might happen with whoever likes the poem the most. 
Uh, don't know. I'm gonna go with, um... Um... Peaceful. I'm gonna go with Dark. Who the fuck... Shut the fuck up, phone. Who the tried to call me? I hope it was my mother. It was restricted, so why I don't give a fuck. Don't, don't give a fuck. Um... Shit. I don't remember what I was writing. Night God. <laughs> um... We're gonna go with, uh... Adventure. To the examination. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> Vibrant Inferno. The Vibrant Inferno of anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> Agonizing. Using big words. Death. Excuse you. What the? Okay. Sad, sad. No! Climax. Unstable. Fear. Excuse you. Melancholy. Vivacious. Massacre. Uncontrollable. Anger. Unending. Okay, I did my best for Yuri. Next time I'm going to switch over to uh, Sayori, which had something I didn't expect. Hi again, Birkify. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Ha ha ha. Nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I keep my word. Well, I'm on recording. I got time. Well, I'm back to the literature club. I was last one, last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Burkify. Hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into the literature when you're not accustomed to it? Oh, come on. Like, he deserves any slack. Oh, I, I, uh, I double-clicked. Sorry told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what, but if you don't take it seriously, then we don't... you won't see the end of it. Natsuko, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. Natsuko finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature! Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Yeah! Shut up, Natsuki! <laughs> Trying to enjoy what time I get to enjoy this game. Don't worry, guys. Burgerfight always gives it his best, as long as he's having fun. He helps with busy work without even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. See, that's because your room is messy and it's distracting. And you almost always set your house on fire once. Is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? You and Burke might become good friends too. Uh, um, S Sayori. Hmm. As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the world situation she put me into. Oh, oh, Yuri even brought you something today. You know. W wait, Sayori. Huh? Me? Um, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? Never mind. Sorry, made it sound like a big deal, but it's really not. Uh, what do I do? Eh? I'm sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. I guess that means up to me to rescue the situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. Can you fuck off, Fly? So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Is that so? Yeah, I don't want to make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. All right. Well, here. You reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. Th this is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? Because the mommy milkers. The big fucking mommy milker. <laughs> anyway, um... That's what I was going to say, and I forgot. Uh, 
I don't remember. I got distracted by the tits. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't pick that out of the book she thinks I like, despite me not reading much. Here, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it on pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Oh, left click, I think. Take that down. I I'll take it to keep off left click, then. Now that everyone settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that seemed to be the case. Yori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in the book. I can't help but notice her intense expression, like she's waiting she's waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging through rummaging around in the closet. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more, but at the same time I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. Looks like the same book that she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. That was a quick change of tone. Alright. Ah. Crap. I think she knows me looking at her. She takes another glance at me and her eyes meet for a split second. Oh no! No! That can't possibly. Not only makes her hide her face deeper inside the book. I don't have a book on hand. Oh yeah, I do right here. I gotta dig it out from under my cables. It's a guitar book, but you know, it's just like... Oh no! For demonstration purposes only. <laughs> that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. Sorry, I was just spacing out. How about her? The sensing I made her uncomfortable. Yeah, as you can see, like my right hand obviously I need for the mouth, but I'm kind of like moving my hand around, pinching my neck, and grabbing my shoulder. It's because I'm nervous. I know what's coming, and I'm nervous. <laughs> uh. Oh. Like, if you see me, like, doing this, like, rubbing my beard or anything, it's not because, like, I, I don't have anything to do with this hand, and I'm, I'm so nervous. <laughs> it's fine. If I, if I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book you gave me, right? Mm hmm I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious, how come you had two copies of the same book? Ah, two for one sale, or... Buy one, get one free sale. That's what I meant. Well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday, uh, that's not what I meant. I mean, I just happened to buy two of them from the bookstore. There's only one bookstore in my, ta my, my town that, I've, that I like. It's called Books a Million. We don't have a Barnes & Noble or anything like that. We just have a Books a Million, which is fine. I like Books a Million. They're always real nice and the place always smells like a library. It's great. No one else likes the smell of, like, fresh books. Like, every time I open that One Piece box, it just smells like fresh books. I bought it fresh off Amazon, and it's, like, awesome. I didn't buy it, actually. I got it for, as a present for my birthday. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's it about anyway? Well, mm. Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Alright, I just wanted to make sure I don't accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long lost younger sister. But as soon as she does, her life gets really strange. She's targeted by these people who escaped from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs desperately to choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships and her, li her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of... It's kind of dark, isn't it? Sounds interesting. Is that a real book? I, I wouldn't think so, but I did think her Twitter was fake, so just to... Just to make sure that I'm not on the wrong side of things here. Okay, so looking at this brief, like, Google front page here, it's showing that, um, 
is supposed to be a hint towards a new game. So it's not a real book. Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so the dark turn came from nowhere. <laughs> Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. I don't know how to gently giggle. I laugh. I laugh hard. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Burkify? No, it's not that. Man, I definitely enjoyed those kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot Yuri is into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just, those kinds of stories, they challenge you to look at life from a different, strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals or, pos or their own philosophy that we can believe in. And suddenly, when you thought you related to the protagonist, they're made out to be naive. Well, the naive one for the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I'm, I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem when I let things like books and writing for my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club after all. Ah... That's... well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? You don't have to! <laughs> what are you saying? It's a moment ago, you said you were looking forward to it. Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I had put in my bag. Alright, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to yours. Ah, uh, yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to, it's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Uh, Alright. Open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri meant about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri's in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. Looks like she's reading from my book instead. S sorry I was just... Yuri, Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I, I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> that makes that actually made me giggle. <laughs> Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's and hold my book more between the two of them. Ah, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we lean in a little bit, over our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. Ah, I guess it kind of makes it difficult to turn the page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah, I just send my right arm on the right side of the book. That way, I turn a page, and Yuri slides under her thumb and flips, flips it to her side. While holding like this, we're huddled even closer than before. That's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth on Yuri's face, just in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Huh? Turn the page. Ah, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. That's over at Yuri's face again, and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah. That's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do, since you've been so patient with me. It, yeah. Thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page for me, so I turn her by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting going to the page, letting it flutter over her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. This might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. You think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways. 
But she's also second guesses all the things she says and does. Like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see into your head or anything, but they're kind of reminiscent of your mannerisms. Uh, I see. You remain silent for a moment. But Berkify, that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. Uh, it's so embarrassing that you think that. Well, wait, I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I didn't know you were really self conscious about that sort of thing. I guess I meant a more meant that's kind of cute. Ah, uh, what are you saying all of a sudden? All of a sudden, where is this coming from? Oh no! <laughs> uh, okay, everyone. Jesus. I think it's about time we shared today's poems with each other. We might not have enough time if we wait too long. Uh, Yuri exhales, spared from finishing a thought. Is that alright, Yuri? You look kind of down. Sorry I haven't been looking forward to this. Uh, it's not... It's fine. He releases her hand from the book, causing it to close the top of my thumb. Alright, I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer I read, only, only read it with you? Um, I guess I don't have too much preference either way. In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'll be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first, first two chapters in your own time. Alright, I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book and slip it into my bag. By the way, do you remember to write a poem last night? Yeah. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I'd never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait! Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori's is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Asuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Who should show my poem to first? I'm gonna go with Yuri since that's who I tried to gear it more towards. Yuri sees no experience, so I should start with her. I can trust her opinion to be fair. As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. Eh? What was that? Did, did I say that out loud? Your first covers her mouth, then them covering her whole face. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I'm so dumb. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm not sorry. Fuck y'all. <laughs> I'm dumb. I'm okay with that. Your covers her mouth, but then them covering her whole face. I. Uh, going to hate me. Um. You really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. Yeah. That's... I guess you're right. What am I getting so nervous for? <laughs> Yuri takes a breath. So, what kind of writing experience do you have? Your use of imagery and metaphors indicates you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? That was a huge compliment coming from you. That's my first time, really. Huh? Yuri stares at me blankly, then looks at my poem again. Well, I know that. I just meant... Uh, um... Yuri trails off, unable to find an excuse. Traces her finger along the words on the poem, as if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah, okay. This is the reason I was able to tell. It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of a new writer. Can I help you? Or what? Floor remote. I have no idea. We're laying across the entire bed. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick up a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form the two together. The result is both the style, style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Of course, it's not something you can be blamed for. There's so many different skills and techniques to go into writing even a simple poem. But just finding in them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. 
I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Mizuki can be a little biased, though. Biased? How? Um. Well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if you're apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily as if that's a rare opportunity for her, which is itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber globe, bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining street light to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by a sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe. Calm, breathing air of the present, but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. It seems like it's towards more of the dystopian setting to me. I don't know. I I'm sorry I have such temple handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Because I'm stupid. Well, I don't read script very often. I just think your handwriting is pretty. Eh? That's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest, since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you in the ghost theory? Who who? What? Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Burkfy. Really. I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all, but remember, the poets often express their own thoughts and feelings and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. Not dystopian, I meant, um, post apocalyptic. Because there's, a uh, just talking about there's one last street light, street light left. And how she's kind of reminiscing on the past, you know, maybe before whatever tragedy happened. In this case, perhaps subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost, lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. It's impressive. Huh? <sighs> There's nothing really. Yours was impressive too, so. Nah. If anything, I can probably learn a thing or two from you. You think so? Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, I was really nervous about doing all this, but in the end, I enjoyed it. I wanted to keep doing my best for you, Berkify. Ah, uh, me too. Alright, I'm gonna go... Natsuki. Then Sayori, then Monica, because FUCK MONICA! Burgify, you're not going to take this club seriously, then go home. What? Harsh. I don't expect me to believe that you actually put effort into this. Do you think I'm stupid? I'm not a writer. Maybe it's not very good, but yeah, I did put in, put in effort. It all starts somewhere, right? If you're still proud of the first poem you ever wrote, then I'd like to read it. Painful to think about. Fine. Well, sorry. You'll get better anyway. I'll tell you what to improve, but you're better off trying again. Fair enough. Well, teach their own, I guess. Anyway, I guess I gotta share mine now. Knowing you, you'll probably think it's stupid. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. People can try, but that's about it. I don't think it's awful. I just now realized that the music kind of toned back in for me. I, I kind of... Like, I know I can hear it all the time in the back of my mind, but, like, I'm not usually paying attention to it. So it's just, it fades in and out around a point. And usually when it changes, when it fades kind of back in. I kind of like this one. There are new soundtracks in here, by the way. I think they added 13 soundtracks. Yeah, I told you that you weren't going to like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because... Everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff, so people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't that the point of poems, for people to express themselves? Writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. 
Like in this poem, seeing everyone around you doing great things can really be disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about writing simple or about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up a rhyme at the end, but it made it fall flat on purpose. It helps you bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went to that into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Well, guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but Natsuki is feeling proud that I won't take that away from her. So real quick, I want to point out that at the beginning of this game, it did give me the graphics warning. And for some reason, it told me that everyone... Well, I guess not for some reason, because it makes sense. It told me that everyone is above 18 in this game. Which I kind of understand why. Because obviously this game is supposed to point towards uh, you getting romantic feelings for one or all or anywhere in between for those characters. And you're supposed to feel some sort of romanticism from this game. Which I fell for it the first time. I'm not even going to lie. I fell for it in the first game. I ain't doing it this time. Not a fucking shot. I know what happens. But on, while, while I'm talking about this whole romanticism thing, um, take a drag real quick. So while we're on topic of romanticism or romanticizing of this game, I don't remember if I ever like compared like what girls I would like to re not really uh, theoretically be with. So if I were to choose, I don't know what I chose back then or even if I did this exercise, but I'm going to do it now. So each each girl has their own characteristics, and each one you know has their own flaws. You know, so I want to get a little more into the game before I make any definite answers. But like, so like Sayori, she's all, we obviously have that bond because we've known each other for a long time. That's always a good sign. But at the same time, she's clingy. I hate clingy. You know, Monica. You know, she seems really smart and all that stuff. She's got all these good qualities to everybody else, but a good quality to everybody else may not be one for you. I'm not into the popular scene. That's not what I what I'm really into. So like. You know, having her have so many friends and stuff like that, it would just annoy me. You know, I have I have a very select group of friends that I hang out with. Um, that includes less than ten people. I like keep a very close knit group of people that I can trust, and it's some acquaintances on the outside, but like it's not very many people. Um, Natsuki, very adorable. She tries to keep things simple, which I really enjoy. Um, but at the same time, she's an asshole. I am too, so we can probably get along, but. <laughs> Um, she seems to be putting everybody else down to help her own feelings, which is not a good trait to have. And then Yuri, very pretty, very smart, you know, and uh, dealing with with smart girls is always interesting. Um, and she's also very, very quiet, reserved, which I personally enjoy. Like I like dealing with quiet, reserved people. But at the same time, she's not very confident in herself, which is kind of a problem. Not for me, because I, I I'm not very confident in myself either. I mean, the whole reason I started YouTube channel, other than I make people laugh, was to be grow confidence. I didn't like my voice. I, I still don't. Um, I wasn't very confident in anything I did, and I've grown more confident in my ability to talk and to be on camera um, more and more as I've done this channel. So um, I don't know. There's a little bit of like I said, a little bit of good best to every character, um, but right now more than anybody else, I'm thinking more Natsuki or Yuri. Like, they both kind of have my attention. Like I said, I'm not going to fall for that trick again, though, because I know the game. Do Sayori next. This is a good poem, Burkify. Our church, first time? Of course. It's not that good. Am I the kind of guy who, should, who would be writing poems in his spare time? <laughs> I guess you're right. But that's why it impressed me. Well, to be honest, I was afraid that you wouldn't do it seriously, or that you wouldn't write one at all. It just reminds me of how you're really a part of the club now. Not so much the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but it doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? Like you said before, like I said before, Burkify. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying to do things like this for other people? That's something that only really good people can do. Thanks, Siori. I'm not sure if Siori sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all? Yeah. I'm going to make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That'll be my way of thanking you. 
Alright, I'm gonna hold you to that then. Yay! Hey, read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> we'll see about that. Dear Sunshine, The way you glow through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed. Making me rub my sleepy, the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever, but I'm not mad. I want breakfast. <laughs> Sayori, this is just a guess, but did you wait till this morning to write this? No, J just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little bit better about myself. Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Ah, yeah. I didn't mean to say it like it was a bad poem. It came out nice, or how should I put it? It just sounded like you, or it just sounds like you. Really? Yeah, especially that last line. I made eggs and toast. Even though you were late to school, it's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. It was so much fun. Monica's the best. Ah, yeah. But next time I won't forget. And I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. Well, Monica's the last choice here, so. Hi, Berkify. Having a good time so far? Ah, yeah. Glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. Ha ha ha! Don't worry, Brickify. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's that sort of barrier that we'll learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I am out of my poem. Mm -hmm. Great job, Brickify. I was going ooh in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. Not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way it always counts when I put some effort in. <laughs> That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know Yuri's is kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism? Unlike Yuri, who uses simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness. Yuri likes it when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write like that effectively. Both line people something... Uh, both allowing people to get something out of it just by feel, or letting some, or letting them deeply analyze all of the nuisance, nuances. I'm having some struggling today. It can take years of practice, well, which I'm assuming Yuri has at this point. I never really asked, though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learning, and learn by trying new things. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It can take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. Love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little biased toward their own kinds of styles, but I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. Not like you have to worry about, impress about impressing them or anything. <laughs> anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. I'm pretty confident for someone who claims to be not very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Yeah, I try to fake confidence. I'm not. Like, so like, obviously some of you know I work as a correctional officer. And I'm confident that I can do my job, right? I'm very confident in talking to inmates. Very confident that I know what I'm doing most of the time. But, like, outside of that, like, it's really all I'm confident in doing. You know, I'm very confident in my ability to, like, when there's, like, a, like, an inmate who doesn't want to, you know, do what I ask them to. I'm very confident that I can talk them down and make them not so angry and be able to resolve the situation peacefully. Like, I, I've never once since I've been there had to, had to hit someone with my baton or never had to, uh, to use my taser on anybody. Um. And I'm proud of that. I've had to go hands on with a few people, but I always, I've never had to like hurt somebody doing so. 
not intentionally. If they hurt themselves because they want to drag themselves or whatever, it's nothing I can help. But I've never like intentionally gone in hands on trying to hurt somebody. It's never been my intention. But outside of that, like I don't talk to anybody outside of work. I don't really like even this makes me feel a little um, uneasy. Like that's why I read so fast because I'm I'm not very confident. You know, it's a problem I need to work on. Hole in wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction? The spackle protrudes. A, no a noisy neighbor? An angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peered inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reeled blind like a film left out in the sun, but it's too late. My retinas. Already scorched with permanent copy of the meaningless image. There's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep. Stretching forever into everything, a hole of infinite choices. I realized that I wasn't looking in, I was looking out, and he was on the other side, looking in. This... The end of that here seems like... It's about this game. So, what do you think? Hmm. It's very freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. Ugh, gotta adjust my chair, because... Oh, God. Okay, we're fine. I unplugged it a little bit. I'm going to set it free from its shackles here. I'm trying to adjust my seat, and I got twisted. Ugh. Okay. A lot of problems with putting emphasis on the time between words. I'm trying to adjust myself so I can sit comfortably. My back's been killing me, so trying to sit like that for too long hurts. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Ah, huh. well, I'm not sure if I don't know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. Yeah, that you're in a game and can see me? It's been influencing my problems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. Kind of nervous talked about deep stuff like that because it's coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on specific points. If you try so hard to make it perfect, you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is, if you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Phew. I guess that's everyone. I glanced around the room. It was a little more trustful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if, even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club after all. I sigh. I guess what I end up getting myself into. Across the room, Zori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yori and Atsuki. They usually exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Azuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Huh? Did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Azuki dismissively returns the poem to returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Yeah? You mean you have to try hard for something to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple suggestions. Hmm. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it, and Berkify did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me, I appreciate the offer, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style. Don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. <laughs> and Berkshire liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Mitsuki suddenly stands up. Oh no. Oh, I didn't realize we were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. The music cut out. Don't like it. No. Turtle. Turtle! I'm a turtle!
don't want to continue. <laughs> Uh, oh, there's music. That's not what I... Uh, you're just... very sent up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Berkfi appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh? How do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out my way to make everything I do overly cute. Uh, uh, um... Is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I was the one whose boobs managed to grow a size bigger as soon as Berkfoot started showing up. <laughs> Nasuki! Uh, Nasuki, that's a little... It doesn't involve you. I don't like fighting you guys. It's like both girls turned to me as if, I just, as if they just don't know standing there. Berkfoot, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she can get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point of making your poems all convoluted for no reason? To me, you should jump out to the reader, not force them to figure it out. Help me explain it to a brick fight. But wait, there's a reason we have so much, so many deep and impressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. I understand that right, brick fight. Um, well. <laughs> How did I get dragged into this in the first place? Well, I, I don't want to anything about writing, but whoever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. God. Sayori, I choose you! <coughs> Hatsuki. City glares at me, drying up anywhere in my mouth. So then I turn to Yuri. Yuri. But your expression is so defenseless, I can't bring myself to say anything to her. Sayori. Huh? Yeah, everyone's fighting making Sayori uncomfortable. How can you keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel like this? Sperkify. Well, that's her problem. This isn't about her. I, I agree. It's unfair for others to interject their own feelings into our conflict. Yeah, unless everyone wants to tell Yuri that she's just what a stuck-up jerk she's being. She would never. It's your immaturity that made her upset about it in the first place. Excuse me? Are you listening to yourself? That's exactly why, exactly why nobody likes you. Stop! Oh, no. Oh, I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> Natsuki, Yuri, you guys are my friends. I just want to see everyone get along and be happy. My friends are wonderful people, and I love them because of the differences. Natsuki poems, they're amazing because they give you so many feelings with just a few words. And Yuri's poems are amazing because they paint beautiful pictures in your head. Everyone's so talented. So why are we fighting? But because, well, also, Natsuki's cute, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yuri's boobs are the, are the same size as they always were. <laughs> Big and beautiful! <laughs> so Yuri, Yuri stands triumphantly. Monica stands behind her bewild with a bewildered expression. Uh, I'll make some tea. Yuri rushes off. Mizuki sits down with a blank expression on her face, staring at nothing. This is why I see vice president, voice part of Monica. She nods in return. To be honest, I might come off as a good leader, and I can organize things. I'm not very good with people. I couldn't bring myself to interject. The president, that kind of, embar that kind of embarrasses me. Nah. It's not like I can blame you. I wasn't able to say anything either. Well, I guess because that means Siori is amazing in her own way, isn't she? You can say that. She might be an airhead, but sometimes it's really suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. Let's see. Take good care of her, okay? I hate to see her get hurt get herself hurt. That makes two of us. You can count on me. Where's my mouse at? Oh, it's over there. Monica smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to nod. Such a genuine person really does make a good present, regardless of what she says. If I could only get the chance to talk to her a little more. Okay, everyone. It's about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? That was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was alright. Well, mostly. Berkfly, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. Maybe you learn something from your friends, too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself, I did learn a little more about the kind of poem everyone likes. 
But any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. Out of myself with newfound determination. Work <laughs> That's a mistake. Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. <laughs> Sora beams at me. It truly has been a while since Zori and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Zori, about what happened earlier, huh? What do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Atsuki? Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. And it's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't, you don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they make good friends with you. Phew. You know, Barkify? It's nice that I can spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone, that makes me the happiest. I think everyone really likes you too. That's... <laughs> Every day is going to be so much fun. Sorry. Looks like Tori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? Let's see what the future holds, Sayori. I pass Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay. Yeah, let's do this. Alright. Real quick, I'm gonna pause my YouTube video. I'm gonna take a towel off my back hurts and uh, I'll be able to set up again. Alright, so, I'm gonna pause for just a second. Not the game, well, the game too, but music. Alright, so, here's my thoughts on the game so far. I'm not seeing anything really new. Um, they stated that they changed a lot of things, including, like, uh, the art form. They changed it to where there is double the pixels, so the game's supposed to look better. Um, but as far as anything, like, new, I haven't seen it yet. And I'm not sure how to get to it. But... Uh, I expect that I will soon. Um, so I was looking at some of this stuff. But as far as like the game itself, um, I'm still having a good time. I know that's going to change soon. Um, but as far as YouTube goes, obviously it's going to split up into different episodes. Um, but on Twitch, it's going to be um, just straight through. I'm going to try to finish this game today. If not today, then I'll finish it tomorrow, but I'm going to try to finish it today before I do anything else today. So, um, thank you all for watching, and if you have any more suggestions for games you want to see me play, let me know in the comments below, and as always, if you like this video, please like, subscribe. If you have any suggestions, give away tips, or comments, put in the comment section below, I'll see you all in the next episode.